Hey guys, Crash here. First things first, I'm going to wipe out RetroArch. I'm going to clear the data, and I'm going to uninstall it. What I did was I made a config file for the Shield users, because they were having issues getting it loaded. And so now, you should be able to put this config file in three locations, and you will be able to load it up with Let's Play and hopefully have no issues. All right. Now that RetroArch is completely gone, we're going to go into the Google Play Store and get it from there. That way it can update and we get extra content later on. So, the cool thing about this is that I've made L3 and R3 the menu buttons. So when you're in a game, you press both of those and RetroArch menu should load up. If you have any problems, let me know. Um, if your controller's not working off the bat, but you hit those and you get in the menu, go ahead and map your controller in there. So the first thing after it installs is you want to open it. So it actually builds and extracts all the files that it needs. And then just go ahead and quit. If that happens, go ahead and close the app. I'm going to go into it again just to show you what it looks like. It's blue with the ribbon. That's the standard RetroArch interface. So you download the file, get it on your shield any which way you can and you're going to copy it. Uh, sometimes navigating ES File Explorer while on the shield is tricky. So you want to highlight RetroArch by pressing and holding the A button and then going down and press copy. Go into internal storage, Android. You can't really see it, but it's on Android. Data com.retroarc then you want to go into the file folder the files folder and overwrite this retroarc config so paste it here and overwrite now you'll want to copy that config file so if you accidentally back out go back into the files folder highlight it Press and hold the A button, copy, then you'll want to back out and paste it right here as well. So that's SD card, Android, data, com.retroarch. So just paste it right next to the files folder. That's place two. First place was in the folder, second place was there. Copy it once again. Go to internal storage. Scroll down and find RetroArch. Go into the configs folder and right here, paste it again. That's place three. Go ahead and back on out. If you follow those directions and did everything all right, when you go back into RetroArch, you'll be greeted with a different screen. Um, you'll know it worked because I made it look different. Now, with any luck, everything will auto map and you're good to go. It should look like this now. Notice my thing auto mapped. I can move around. Excellent. Go ahead and quit. Launch Let's Play. Go to one of your games. Launch it. Oh no, it didn't launch. Oh, I need to get a core. So, back on out. Go back to RetroArch. Go to Load Core. Download Core. Find the core you need. Download it. Let it finish. Go ahead and just back on out. You notice it was there. Go back into Let's Play. Click on your game. And voila, it should work. 
Now, press L3 and R3 to get into the menu. And if you need to, change any inputs you want. For this game, or this core, I'm changing my coin button because it doesn't like my select button. So I changed it to R2 because it's not used. Then I'm going to go over here and save it. Go to configuration, save current configuration. You can see where it's saved at the bottom of the screen. And then that's all I need to do. So I'll go back to the game. Quick menu, resume. Well, enjoy uh, me as my mediocre versus games. I'm more into the uh, long role-playing games like Final Fantasy VII. So enjoy me fighting Doslam and some beholder-looking thing. All right, guys, you have a good one.